In a landmark experiment, physicists have shown that, like everything else subject to gravity, antimatter falls downward when dropped. It isn't a surprising result, in fact, a big difference in the gravitational behaviour of matter and antimatter would have rocked physics to its core. But the observation fulfills an ambition that physicists have had for decades. In the world of antimatter, atomic nuclei are made of negatively charged antiprotons and, in orbit around them, positively charged anti-electrons or positrons. According to the standard model of particle physics, opposite charges should be pretty much the only difference. Particles and antiparticles should have nearly all the same properties. In particular, Experiments have confirmed that positrons and antiprotons have the same masses as their matter counterparts within the limits of experimental error. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, all objects of the same mass should weigh the same. In other words, they should experience the same gravitational acceleration. To put this principle to the test, scientists at CERN, the European Organization for Particle Physics Research, designed an experiment to show what happens when atoms of anti-hydrogen, which are neutral, are dropped. It would be almost impossible to do such an experiment with charged particles because gravity is so much weaker than other forces, such as electrostatic attraction or magnetism that separating it from other effects in the laboratory is a major challenge, hence the choice of antihydrogen. Antimatter particles are routinely created in laboratories. Most that are produced by high-energy collisions come in pairs, one particle of matter and its antiparticle. But it's hard to get antiparticles to combine into antiatoms because antimatter particles are extremely short-lived. When an antiparticle meets a particle, they mutually destruct and turn back into energy in a process called annihilation. In a world made almost entirely of matter, this makes it hard for antimatter particles to survive long enough to combine into atoms. CERN is currently the only place in the world where anti-hydrogen can be made. It has an accelerator that makes antiprotons from high-speed proton collisions and a decelerator called ELENA that slows them down enough to be held for further manipulation. The experiment known as Alpha-G combines antiprotons with positrons it collects from a radioactive source. After making a thin gas of thousands of anti-hydrogen atoms, researchers pushed it up a 3 meter tall vertical shaft surrounded by superconducting electromagnetic coils. These coils form a magnetic container to keep the antimatter from coming into contact with matter and annihilating. Next, the researchers let some of the hotter anti-atoms escape so that the gas in the container got colder, down to half a degree Celsius above absolute zero, and the remaining antiatoms were moving slowly. The researchers then gradually weakened the magnetic fields at the top and bottom of the trap and detected the antiatoms using two sensors as they escaped and annihilated. When opening any gas container, the contents tend to expand in all directions. But in this case, the anti-atoms' low velocities meant that gravity had an observable effect. Three quarters of them came out of the bottom opening and only one quarter out of the top. To make sure that this asymmetry was due to gravity, the researchers had to control the strength of the magnetic fields to a precision of at least one part in 10,000. The results were consistent with the antiatoms experiencing the same force of gravity as hydrogen atoms would. The margin of error is still quite large, but the experiment at least rules out the possibility that antihydrogen falls upward. It's a result that came as no surprise to anyone. For one thing, although antiprotons are made of antiquarks, these make up less than 1% of an antiproton's mass. The rest is the energy that binds them together. 
Insiders have long expected that any violation, if it exists, wouldn't be more than 1%. Beyond that would undermine not only the general theory of relativity, but also the standard model of particle physics. Still, the alpha g result is an important milestone. Similar experiments will aim to test whether gravity acts with the same strength on antimatter as it does on matter. Any discrepancies, however small, could help solve one of the biggest problems in physics, how the universe came to be made almost exclusively of matter, even though equal amounts of matter and antimatter should have arisen during the Big Bang. <laughs>